So the last video we made about the dynamic brace height got quite a lot of interest and a lot of comments and there was a lot of questions. So I decided to do an experiment and to try and explain it better. But before we get there, I just want to tell a story of what happened. It's just going to be briefly, it's not going to be a long video. I'm trying to explain dynamic bracelet in five minutes. So in 2004, I was shooting a Matthews Conquest. And for the people that's been shooting a long time, I think you'll remember this bow. This is a more traditional upright bow. And then I experimented with 2004, I started experimenting with a Constitution. And that was a Bowtech and it was a little bit more parallel. The bow aimed great, and but I just didn't get the consistency I'd got with the Conquest. Many years forward, about 2014, I went over to a Bowtech specialist and I shot great with that bow, very underrated bow. And then I went over to the Fanatic. Now the Fanatic was a parallel limbo again and it aimed great, but just a little bit more inconsistent. So after being a little bit inconsistent with the Fanatic, I decided to go back to the Matthews and then the latest model then was the TRX. So I decided that must be it. You know, this is the latest and greatest. So I got a TRX and I had the same problems. Eventually I owned four and it's not to say that it's a bad bow. Just back then, I didn't know the setup knowledge that I have now. I went back to the Conquest and immediately I saw a lot of improvements. And with me back to my trusty Conquest, I was shooting the scores I haven't shot in many, many years. Now, I'm not bashing the parallel limbos. I think they got a lot better, I must add as well. But the thing is, there's just a slight different method you have to follow with your setup. It's actually a basic fix and you just have to be aware of it. I'm briefly going to explain what dynamic brace height is. And if you're still not sure, check out this video. I'm going to put the link up now. It's the previous video where I explain a bit more about what dynamic brace height is. So what it basically is, when you draw your bow, when you get to full draw, where your string comes off the cams in relation to your grip, that distance, that will vary from bow to bow. Yes, draw length makes a difference. Um, cam design makes a difference. There's a lot of variance in bow design, but the biggest effect that you have on that dynamic brace height effect is the geometry of the bow. So in the previous video, I tested two bows. It was a Matthews Lift and a sequel from Dalton. And there was a bit of variance. The axle to axle varied slightly, but no major issues. But it's nothing to do with the brands. It's just bow design. So that's what determines your dynamic brace height. It's basically physics. It's not to do with the one brand as the other one. The, might, the one brand might favor a certain design and the other brand might favor a different design. The only thing is you should know about it. There's no getting around the fact that a dynamic brace height will change how much it talks at full draw. So I came up with a design. This is patent bending. Just kidding. Obviously, it's just a simple thing I came up with. But this is going to explain and hopefully prove my theory that the smaller the brace height, dynamic brace height, the easier it talks. I've got a side that's going to simulate a short dynamic brace height. So this is a six and a half inch dynamic brace height. And this over here is a 12 inch dynamic brace height. So if I have it basically simulated at full draw, it's the same draw length as 30 inches. I did measure each one. So this has a shorter string to compensate for the longer dynamic brace height. And then this is the shorter dynamic brace height with a longer string. So the distance from your grip this whole year simulates your grip to the distance to your loop or your knocking point that is at 30 inches on both. So all things are equal here. I haven't tested this, so let's see if it actually works. Otherwise, I just won't put the video up. Just kidding. So let's see how this works. I also have a scale at the back where I'm going to have it on the same let off or holding weight, basically. So I'm going to get it around 20 pounds and uh, 18 to 20 pounds, but both will be the same. We're going to get to that now. It's actually going to be very, very interesting. So I'm to explain what's going on here. This contraption, I've got my scale here. It's in the draw board. And this is the side of the smaller brace height. It's 6.5 dynamic brace height, it's 6.5. I'm going to do the old test where I pull this. It's up to 20 pounds about holding weight until the scale reads 20 pounds in the back. 
And then I'm going to take the stabilizer, I'm going to take another scale, and I'm going to pull this stabilizer to the side an inch, and then see what's the difference in reading. So like last time as well, the higher the resistance, the better. So if it reads about a, like say, one pound of resistance on the stabilizer, that's a good thing. If it reads 0.5, around there, half a pound, the bow will be quite twitchy and very torque sensitive. So let's start, it's gonna be interesting. This, so again, we're gonna do the short dynamic brace on first. Okay, so I want it continuous and I'm gonna get it up to 20 pounds. All right, so it's 20.9, the holding weight. And we're all set to go here in front. I've got it. Around the stabilizer. I've got it on that mark. That's one inch if I move it. I'm just gonna tear this. I'm gonna look from the top. I'm gonna pull it one inch. Point seven six of a pound. Let's just do it again to make sure that we get more or less the same number. Hopefully exactly the same. Zero point seven six. So exactly the same reading. I'm gonna change it up to the longer brace height and let's see. My prediction is gonna be more. It would make sense, but let's see. The proof is in the pudding. Okay, so I've changed it up. Now this is the longer dynamic brace height. This is 12 inches from the grip to where the string basically comes off the cams. And I forgot to mention earlier, I even got the same string angle. So these two here are six inches apart and these are also six inches apart. If that makes a difference, I doubt it does, but just to get everything equal. Okay, I'm going to pull it to the side, one inch. One point four one. Just do it again. So make hundred percent sure. One three nine. So very, very consistent, and even with this contraption and theory, the dynamic brace height, the longer dynamic brace height, the larger one, performs better in terms of torque resistance. So according to my testing, the theory is sound, so we're going to get back to shooting some arrows on the range here, and we hope that you enjoy the video, and it will be back for more, until we see you again in the next one.